So now uh, we are recording. And uh, first of all, uh, some basic information about uh, final examination. Of course, uh, you know uh, that uh, basic condition uh, to pass the course is to send uh, your homework every week uh, and this homework will be evaluated according to the course uh, you need uh, at least uh, six or eight homework. Uh, first of all I would like to apologize uh, that there is a short delay uh, in the evaluation of homework uh, in the next uh, in the last two weeks. Uh, it is caused uh, uh, by other my uh, duties at the faculty uh, but I can promise that this week uh, once again I will update all results. Uh, so so that's a necessary condition uh, to pass the course uh, send at least six or eight homework. And uh, the next condition is to pass final test. And uh, this test uh, will be a written test. It means uh, it will consist of two analytical tasks that are similar to your homework. So it means uh, that you will get uh, two tasks, uh, uh, one from the second part of the semester, second part from the second part. And then uh, you will have 60 minutes uh, to analyze data. Uh, of course, uh, uh, and I hope it's pleasant for you. Uh, you will use the same data as for your homework. It means European Value Survey, UVS 99 uh, data file. Uh, and uh, after 60 minutes, uh, you will send uh, your final results uh, in one Microsoft Word document. Uh, and of course, I will evaluate uh, these results. Uh, so uh, that's uh, how it works. Uh, and uh, only uh, you should know that all these exams uh, will be held uh, online so it means you will be connected uh, via zoom uh, as we are currently here and then uh, uh, we will uh, then uh, you will be using SPSS uh, and Microsoft Word uh, uh, to pass the test uh, and uh, that's all about uh, testing at least from uh, my uh, side and now it's uh, time for your questions uh, about the test uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. So if there are no questions about this, I would like only uh, to start sharing screen. So here it is. So currently you should uh, see my screen. First of all, I would like uh, to say that if you uh, enter into SIS and find your course, it means statistics and SPSS into statistics or statistics for social sciences, you should find new presentation, uh, which is uh, called SPSS recap second. Uh, so it is uploaded into SIS. I will use uh, this presentation for this lecture and uh, also, I would like to say, uh, if I switch into English version, uh, that uh, if you uh, visit uh, exam dates, uh, so uh, you should uh, find uh, exam dates uh, for this course. Uh, so uh, if I will find my future exam dates, uh, so I can announce and maybe you are familiar with this information as uh, you are already enrolled, uh, at least some of you, that uh, uh, there will be uh, exam date uh, next uh, Monday. Uh, so uh, you are already enrolled uh, to this exam date, uh, 12, 30, 12, uh, 15 and uh, 13, 10. Uh, uh, and uh, do, 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 do. no, excuse me, uh, that's not for your course. Uh, excuse me, uh, that's Tuesday, of course, uh, uh, next Tuesday, and uh, it is uh, uh, 22nd, uh, 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. And also, I added uh, one more uh, date uh, uh, <coughs> during ninth time, uh, so uh, 6 p.m. is the next opportunity. So you can enroll into these exam dates. Uh, and once again, uh, we will manage uh, exam dates uh, uh, via Zoom uh, and you will be using SPSS and also uh, Microsoft Word uh, for finishing your exam. So that's information 
about exam dates. Uh, and once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me about exams. Okay, so if there are no questions, uh, so I would start uh, the second uh, recap lecture. Uh, so I will be discussing uh, briefly about data analytical tasks uh, that were included in the second part of the semester. Of course, if you have any question, uh, please ask immediately uh, and uh, stop uh, my talking uh, and uh, try uh, to find uh, your uh, problems to be solved. So uh, that's uh, uh, my wish uh, at the beginning. So. Uh, at least uh, I would like uh, once again to repeat that if you find your course, you can download the presentation. So once again, uh, that's uh, the file which is called once again, here it is. So the file which is called SPSS recap second PPT. This is uh, the presentation, uh, the first slide called SPSS recap second. So this is the presentation we will be using. And the second, uh, what is necessary uh, to follow this lecture is that I will be using a data file, the same uh, for lectures. So it means it is uh, the file called ISSP 99CZ short SAV. Once again, this file is also available through SIS. So I will uh, close uh, this dialog uh, and uh, close uh, <coughs> Chrome. And uh, we can start a briefly uh, recap of a data analytical task. So in the second part of the semester, uh, the main goal is uh, to show you how we can practically analyze data. So it means how we can uh, analyze more than one variable at once. So here is, I hope, a very simple scheme that can help you to decide which task uh, should be proceeded uh, in data analysis. So, I would, for simplicity, divide all analytical tasks that were covered in this course into two big groups. The first group I would call that we are trying to find some difference between groups. So we can, for example, find differences uh, uh, in means, medians, proportions, or other statistics, but means, medians, and proportion uh, this is uh, the most common procedures. And we can divide my data into two groups or more groups. Classical procedures, and you will see this scheme uh, in the next uh, slides, uh, is that we will be using here for this comparison uh, of means, medians, proportion for two or more groups, t-tests, or analysis of variance. So we are trying to find differences. Second analytical task, different analytical task, is that we are trying to find relationships uh, between uh, variables. So uh, I would once again share my screen to show you this slide. So here it, here it is. So we are trying to find differences or we are trying to find relationships. There are also other analytical tasks, but these tasks are not included in this introductory course. So we will not discuss these, and uh, you are not familiar with this, I guess. And according uh, to this distinction, finding for difference and finding for relationship, uh, we will uh, follow uh, in this recap lecture. So first of all, we will be briefly uh, discussing about procedures for finding difference, and I will show you brief analytical procedures uh, through SPSS. And in the second part of this lecture, we will be discussing about procedures for finding relationship. But still, if there is some question, 
uh, so feel free to ask me uh, uh, just now. So are there any questions? So no questions so far. So I will go into the second, uh, into the first uh, part of procedures and we will be comparing groups through t-tests and analysis of variance. So first of all, uh, some simple scheme that can help you to decide which procedure you should use for your uh, analytical task. So here in this scheme, you can see there are two columns. First column is called two groups. Second column is called more groups. So here we have procedures for two groups, comparisons of differences. Here we have procedures for comparison of more than two groups. Then we can also differentiate here different rows. So in the first row, there are red procedures. It is called means. And these procedures are trying to compare means between two or more groups. For comparison of means in two groups, we usually apply t-test for two independent samples. So we expect that our variable for which we are comparing means is cardinal variable and we divide our data into two groups and comparing two means. If you have more than two groups, t-test is not appropriate procedure and you should perform analysis of variance. So we can also say that analysis of variance is generalization of t-test for the occasion if we have more than two groups. So that's about means and that's about cardinal variables. But if you have variables that are ordinal, you are not allowed to compare means. So you should change your data analytical task and compare medians. As for ordinal variable, as far as you know, median is classical descriptive statistic. If you have two groups, so analogy to t-test for ordinal variables is called man witney test. And analogy to analysis of variance for medians is called kruskal bolles test. So these are four analytical procedures for comparison of two or more groups for means and medians. So we can uh, go further. And uh, now I will cover uh, two um, brief examples of t-test and analysis of variance. So before we start, uh, we should only recap that t-test for two groups can be found through analyze, compare means, and two independent samples. So if you go into SPSS, analyze, compare means, and uh, independent samples t-test. So that's the procedure for two independent samples t-test. And if we are proceeding this procedure, we need to define test variable. It means variable for which we will be comparing means. And the second variable that is necessary to define is called grouping variable. And grouping variable means this is variable by which I divide my data into two groups. So for our analytical task, uh, in the uh, next few minutes, uh, uh, we will be discussing uh, about uh, uh, difference uh, uh, in means for length of education between men and women. And if you are performing two independent samples t-test, the first test, which is necessary to perform, is called Leibniz test. Leibniz test decide whether you should perform t-test for equal or unequal variances. In SPSS, according to results of Leibniz test, we will decide which row of table for t-test will be interpreted. And final result for t-test will be evaluated by p-value. It means the value that can help us to decide about so-called statistical significance. And we can also uh, compute and interpret so-called Cohen's D. So it means uh, so-called effect size or measurement of substantive significance of results. So that's how we are performing t-test. And now let's try to perform t-test in my data. 
So, first of all, uh, variables and preparation of variables uh, we will be uh, using here. So, here, the first variable in my data set is called B9, and it is the length of education. The only necessary preparation of this variable is that I should omit code 88 DKNA from my uh, analysis. So I would define 88 as missing value. So click into cancel. Let's go into variable view, the first row, and here click into missing. And discrete missing value will be 88 for my variable called B9, which is length of education. The second variable we will be using for division of my data into two groups is B48, male and female. I should only know about coding of this variable. One means female and sec uh, second code uh, is true and it means uh, female. So one mean male and two female. I should remember one and two will be groups that will be compared in my data analysis. So click into cancel and if I would like uh, to analyze difference in means for the length of education uh, by gender, so uh, all variables are prepared. Before we start, I would like to ask you about uh, your opinion, whether there will be some difference in means for length of education for men and women. So these are Czech data, so at least Czech students maybe can help us. So what's your expectation? So I will stop sharing for a minute. And uh, if you can help me uh, and uh, tell me what's your expectation about results, whether it means, it means uh, mean of uh, length of education for men and women in Czech Republic are different or not. So if somebody uh, can give me a hint uh, by microphone, or of course you can use chat. I would take a guess that the means should be somewhat somewhat close, but like the male uh, sample will be somewhat more dispersed, as in like a lot of elementary education and a lot of tertiary education. Uh, but uh, we are not discussing about dispersion, we are discussing about average level. So if the average level of education for men and women, it is measured by years of education, uh, will be the same or not. Uh, that's uh, what I would like to know. Then I would say that they'll be pretty close. Very close, it's your expectation. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, I will once again uh, start sharing uh, of the screen. So, uh, here it is. Uh, and uh, before we start, uh, it should be uh, also good uh, uh, to repeat what is the basic uh, wording uh, of null and alternative hypothesis for this t-test. So, null hypothesis uh, uh, say uh, that there is no difference between men and women in the average length of education for the whole Czech population. And alternative hypothesis, at least uh, uh, the general uh, alternative hypothesis, uh, which is called two-tailed, says, okay, there is some difference. So these are two competing hypotheses. So now uh, we will compute t-test. So analyze, compare means, and independent samples t-test. And now we need only to divide variables into two parts, test variable and grouping variable. So I will start with test variable and it is years of education. So here it is, it is tested variable and gender is grouping variable. We need only to define uh, groups, which we will compare code one and code two. So define groups one and two. If you are using SPSS 27 currently, I'm using uh, SPSS 26. Uh, there is one more dialogue here on the first screen, and this dialogue uh, allows you uh, to compute effect sizes uh, or measurement of substantive significance. Uh, it means Cohen's D. Here it is uh, not uh, prepared for us. It is older version, uh, so I will compute it uh, by different way. So. That's enough uh, for computation, and I will now click into OK and compute results. 
First of all, before we start uh, to read the results of t-test, this is the second table, I will only briefly uh, recap uh, information in the first uh, table, which is called group statistics. So this is descriptive statistics for male and female. So we know that for male, we have uh, 813 people, for female, nearly 1,000 uh, ladies are included. The average in my sample for male is approximately 13 years, for female, approximately 12 years. Standard deviation is nearly the same for all groups, and it seems there is small difference between means in my sample and the slightly more educated group uh, uh, are men than women, according to my data. Approximately one year difference here I can see. And now the question is, if I can see some difference in my sample, whether there is also some difference uh, in the population. And for answering of this question, we need to perform t-test. So here it is. Uh, this is a t-test table, but first two columns are not about t-test, are about Levinas test of equality of variances. So first of all, we need to decide whether to read the first or second row. The rule is very simple. If p-value here in SPSS, it's called significance, is low, usually below 0 0.05, equal variances are not assumed and we should read the second row. If the significance is quite big one, at least 0 0.05 or higher, maybe that variances are the same and we should read the first row. And some of you can help me if we should read the first row or the second row in this case, in this data analysis. So can you help me? Please use microphone. The first row, because it's over. Yeah, yeah. First row, it seems that variances are the same. And here are results. T value, degrees of freedom, significance, and uh, other stuff. So uh, in this recap lecture, we will only briefly read significance. Uh, so, once again, we call usually this value as p-value, and it is the probability that I get data as I have, or more extreme, if the null hypothesis is true. So, once again, the rule for decision is usually that if p-value is low, usually people use 0 0.05 as the border, so if it is below 0 0.05, I will reject null hypothesis, and I will accept alternative one. So it means in my case, I would uh, conclude that there is some difference uh, for means of education uh, land between men and women. And if p-value would be above 0 0.05, I wouldn't reject null hypothesis. It means I would say, hmm, I'm not able to reject hypothesis that the length of education for men and women on average are the same. So here the p-value is quite low one. So once again, uh, I would be happy if somebody can help me and uh, can say what would be the interpretation, final conclusion from this t-test. If the p-value is very, very low, at least three places in the first three decimal places after uh, uh, decimal uh, are zero. So can somebody help me and interpret these results? So in our case, we would reject the null hypothesis because uh, 0 0.00. Okay, is... and uh, substantively what we can say about differences of means uh, for length of education? If you can continue, please. Are there any differences for this uh, average length of education between Czech men and women or not? Uh, yes, and they are not the same. Okay, so my conclusion would be, okay, I can say that it seems that there is some difference, not only in my sample, but also in population. Okay, last one step. Uh, what should be computed, uh, unfortunately, SPSS uh, 26 uh, cannot help us, but it's quite simple, so we can compute it maybe uh, directly uh, in our heads, is to compute Cohen's D. If you are using SPSS 27 and a high-op, so, uh, so Cohen's D would be 
automatic output, uh, but here uh, we can compute it very simply. So it's difference between two means, so 12.95 and 12.05, so it's approximately 0 0.9 difference between these two means, and it must be divided, so that's the definition of Cohen's D, by standard deviation. Standard deviation is approximately three. So if I divide 0 0.9 by approximately three, my result, so this is my estimation of Cohen's D, would be approximately 0 0.3. And uh, can somebody help me to interpret what means uh, Cohen's D approximately 0 0.3? It is substantively significant result, not substantively significant result, big one, small one difference. So if somebody can help me, please help me. What are recommended borders uh, for Cohen's D according to Cohen's book? Um, can I try? I'm okay. not sure. It's from zero to one. Zero um, to one, what is from zero to one? So if we have um, zero, we have a quite low difference. And if we have closer to one, will you, we have more difference. Between but maybe you are mixing simple. information about contingency coefficient uh, and uh, Cohen's D, I guess. Is somebody familiar about uh, recommendation about Cohen's D values? Uh, which values okay. are called uh, small, medium, big? Can I? Yeah, you can. Uh, I think it's if it's below uh, 0 0.2, the value is below 0 0.2, then it's not si significant. Uh, if it's between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5, there is some significance. And it's, if it's uh, above 0 0.5, it is, there is big significance. Yeah, uh, borders from Cohen's were 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.8. So approximately around these values, uh, he called uh, these effects as small, medium and big one. So if it is 0 0.3, it is quite close to 0 0.2. So this effect, this difference would be called small difference. So it is statistically significant. So we can say there is some effect, but this effect is quite small one. It will be our conclusion. So here is uh, the example uh, about heat test. And now uh, if there are some questions, feel free to ask me. Okay, if there are no questions, uh, I would uh, uh, continue uh, to the next procedure for comparison of means, but now we will not comparing uh, only two groups, but more than two groups by analysis of variance. So analysis of variance is analytical procedure for comparison of more than two uh, means uh, in one step. So uh, I would, uh, uh, follow the same uh, or similar task. So once again, I would take length of education as a dependent variable. So we will be comparing average uh, length of education. And if we need more than two groups, I would propose uh, that we can, for simplicity, use variable B6. And B6, uh, we go into our data, is the scale from one to five uh, and it is about political orientation of people. One means extremely left, five means extremely right. There is only one option that should be excluded from my data analysis, and it's called A, D, K, and A. So before we start to define, uh, excuse me, before we start uh, uh, to define analysis of variance, I would need uh, for variable B6 to define missing values. So code eight will be excluded. So here it is. So once again, we will be comparing length of education, average length of education by political orientation. Once again, before we start the analysis, it would be nice if somebody can help me 
and uh, uh, can uh, say what can be the conclusion from my data analysis. If people more on the right scale or more on the left scale can be more educated or if there is no difference uh, between people according uh, to the left right scale. So what's your expectation? I would take a guess that with more years of education, people will be more right-leaning. Okay, so expectation is uh, that uh, right-oriented people will be more educated, left-oriented people uh, slightly less educated. Okay, so that's the expectation. Once again, before we start, uh, I would only um, briefly recap uh, what should be included uh, in analysis of Ryan's. So once again, let's go into the presentation. So for analysis uh, of Ryan's, we will be using dialog analyze, compare means, one way ANOVA. We will define so-called dependent list. So it is variable for which we are comparing means and factor. So it means variable by which we divide my data into groups. So dependent list would be length of education and factor left right scale so it means b9 and b6 once again we would apply leaviness test as also here for analysis of variance there are two versions or two different tests for equal variances and for unequal variances and then uh, after leaviness test we will decide whether to apply classical ANOVA or some alternative or so-called robust test uh, so it means uh, Welch test uh, or brown Forsyth test then we can read basic results and decide about basic competing hypotheses. I would like uh, to remind you that basic uh, null and alternative hypotheses for analysis of variance are following. Null hypothesis says there is no difference between any groups. So all groups are the same according to their means. An alternative hypothesis says that at least two groups are different. So it's just opposite of null hypothesis. And if I will find some difference, so it means I will reject null hypothesis and accept alternative one, I need to compare individual pairs of groups that are created in my data by so-called post hoc or multiple comparisons test. And for evaluation, once again, we will be using p-value and for measurement of substantive significance or so-called effect size, we will be using Fisher's ETA. So that's uh, our uh, analytical uh, steps and uh, we can now uh, try uh, to compute our results. So variables are already prepared for data analysis. So we can go into analyze, compare means and one way ANOVA. Once again, the difference between my dialogue in SPSS 26 and your in SPSS 27 is that this dialogue in SPSS 26 uh, do not uh, offer option uh, for measurement of substantive significance. So I'm not able to compute uh, uh, Fisher's eta here, uh, but I will show you another option how we can use it in uh, older versions of SPSS. So dependent list, use of education, B9, and factor is political orientation. Before we start to compute anything uh, in analysis of variance, at least in this dialogue, we should visit options and we should at least ask for descriptive statistics and for Levinas test, which is called here homogeneity of variance test. If variances will not be the same, I would need to apply for some alternative tests, such as Brown Forsyth or Welch test but currently we do not know this result. So I will click into continue and okay. So here it is. And uh, before we start uh, to compute results, uh, we can briefly check descriptive statistics for my data. So here I can see the average length of education for left oriented people approximately uh, uh, 12 and a half. Uh, 12 and quarter uh, for slightly uh, left oriented people, for people in the middle, uh, 12, 15, for people slightly on the right, uh, 17, 21, and uh, for people uh, more on the right scale, uh, 13.65. So it seems that uh, the guy uh, <coughs> who 
uh, gave us expectation a uh, few minutes ago uh, was right, as it seems that if you go to the right, uh, the average length of education is slightly increasing. But these are only descriptive results uh, for my data, for my sample. You can also check that standard deviations are quite close to each other, uh, and that's basic description uh, of my data. Here we have test of homogeneity of variance, sleeveness test. Uh, there are currently four versions in SPSS, but we are usually using the first one based on means. And if you can see this significance, uh, so it is quite low one. So once again, somebody can help me to say whether variances are the same or not, and whether we should perform classical analysis of variance or some alternative robust test. So can somebody help me to say whether variances are the same or not, according to Leibniz test? They are different because it's under 0 0.005. Yeah. Yeah. P-value is quite uh, small, so we are not allowed, I would say, to read this table, so I will delete this table and we need some alternative robust test. So I would go once again into analysis of Ryan's and I will ask for some of these alternatives. I would choose for example Welch test but it doesn't matter uh, which one we will take. So here it is. Once again I will delete basic analysis of Ryan's ta table and here is robust test of equality of means. And here is test statistics, degrees of freedom, first one and second one, and p-value for this test, which is comparing individual means for groups that are divided uh, into five groups from left to right. This p-value is quite low one. Once again, null hypothesis says that all averages are the same, an alternative that at least two are different. And I would once again be happy if somebody can help me uh, to interpret these results and to say uh, what is my, I would call it, preliminary conclusion from analysis of Ryan's. We reject the null hypothesis and say that there is some difference between these two. Not between these two, but between some of groups. We don't know which groups are different, but at least two groups are different. That's my conclusion. So my, I would once again call it preliminary conclusion, say maybe there is some difference and I would go farther and I would need uh, to uh, analyze data more deeply. And this more deep analysis is performed by so-called post hoc or multiple comparison. So I would need once again to go into dialogue for analysis of variance. And first of all, I need to decide whether equal variances are assumed or not assumed. As far as we know from previous dialogue, so I would close it, uh, variances are not the same. So I would need to go to multiple comparisons in the second button part, which is called equal variances not assumed. My recommendation is uh, to perform games holo test, uh, which is uh, one of uh, the best uh, for these occasions. Click into uh, continue and OK. And if I take uh, this table, I can try to find four individual pairs. So it means uh, quite more left oriented, slightly left oriented, left and medium, left and slightly right, left and extremely right. For all these pairs, these are uh, comparisons. And we can see at least by p-values that not all of these are statistically significant. I can see the difference for slightly left and extremely right. Here is the difference, which is approximately one and a half year of difference on average, and it is statistically significant. Also, slightly left, and slightly right, approximately one year difference, once again, statistically significant. Uh, the next difference is people in the middle and slightly right, 
and ephemeral, approximately one and one and a half year. Uh, and that's all as these pearls are sometimes uh, um, repeated. So I would say there are only four differences between uh, slightly left and uh, slightly right, slightly left, extremely right, and then four people uh, in the middle and slightly right and extremely right. So these are four differences that can be found in my data. Last question is that uh, we know there are some differences, we decided which differences are present. And last step is uh, to evaluate substantive significance uh, of these results. We can compute so-called Fisher's eta, uh, very simple computation of uh, this uh, uh, would be uh, to take between groups variance and total, uh, but it's not necessary to compute it by hat, uh, so we can ask SPSS. In SPSS 27, this is included in this dialogue for one way ANOVA, uh, but here in older version, I would need another dialogue, so I will show you how it works. So I would go into compare means means. Here I would define the same task, so length of education and political orientation. So. Uh, these are two variables uh, that uh, are defined. I would go into options and I would ask for analysis of rights and ETA. Continue and OK. And here I can see uh, Fisher's ETA. We are usually using ETA squared and the value is 0 0.032. Once again, I would compute it by uh, head or pencil and paper, very simply, I would take between groups variance and divide by total variance. So it is 0 0.03. And the interpretation is usually performed by multiplying by 100 in percentages. So it means that three percentages of differences between length of education are explained by the left right scale. The rest 97% are uh, influenced by other factors. So substantively, it means that left right scale is not big cause of differences of length of education. It explains only three percentages. So substantively, the effect is very, very small one, I would conclude. But statistically, this result is significant. So from substantive point of view, it's not significant. From statistical point of view, it's quite significant impact. So that's a result of analysis of variance. Once again, if there are any questions, feel free to ask me. So I would stop sharing for a minute. So no questions so far. So I will once again share screen. Sorry, I have one question. Yeah. Um, and like, can, can we interpret um, substantive significance like this with um, when we just uh, do the test, uh, like reject uh, zero hypothesis and or accept, uh, yeah. Excuse me, once again, the question was? Uh, yeah, like, can we interpret like that when we do, for example, uh, a t-test, uh, substantive significance, like uh, if there are 30, uh, 0, 0, 0,03 is that three percent are only uh, explain um, our result. So your question is whether we can apply uh, Fisher's eta also for t test or not? Like not not Fisher's eta, but substantive significance. Like uh, we, should, we can, yeah. For t test, um, for t test, we are using Cohen's d as we discussed previously. Yeah, can we interpret it like this? Is that it explains. No, no, no. For Cohen's, uh, Cohen's D is uh, defined differently, so it cannot be interpreted in percentages. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. It's only these, what uh, only know. these uh, effect sizes uh, that are usually called uh, it is squared, such as eta squared, r squared, etc., can be interpreted in these percentages. Uh, other uh, effect sizes cannot be interpreted in this way, uh, as there are two different kinds of uh, effect sizes or substantive. Uh, significance measurements. Uh, uh, first one is based on explained variance. So these mm -hmm. are eta squared, r squared, etc. And other uh, are usually defined in other way and cannot be interpreted by this way. And Cohen's D is not uh, this kind. 
Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. Okay, welcome. So, uh, I would once again share screen and uh, we would uh, go to the uh, next part and we will be briefly discussing about relationships. Uh, so it means about contingency tables and correlations. Uh, so it means procedures uh, for nominal, ordinal and cardinal variables uh, for finding relationships. First of all, some simple scheme. So here we have uh, three colors, uh, red one once again for cardinal, uh, green one for ordinal and blue one for nominal variables. So if you are trying to find relationships between cardinal variables, we are usually performing so-called Pearson's correlation. For ordinal variables, we are using usually Spearman's or Kendall's correlation that are based on rankings. And if we have uh, nominal variables and trying to find relationships, we are usually performing contingency tables, contingency coefficients. Usually we are performing so-called Kramer's V as a uh, the most common contingency coefficient. So uh, once again, we will uh, <coughs> perform two simple tasks. So we will perform one correlation and uh, we will also briefly uh, compute uh, one result of contingency table. So for correlation, uh, if you are using two variables at once, uh, we would use an SPSS procedure that can be found through analyze, correlate, and B variate. So that's correlation for two variables. Uh, and once again, we are mainly interested in statistical and substantive significance. Statistical significance can be evaluated by p-value and substantive significance by the value of the correlation coefficient itself. So correlation coefficient here is the measurement of substantive significance or effect size. And of course, for statistical significance, we are using statistical tests and we are evaluating uh, this test by p-value in comparison with some predefined alpha. It means uh, probability of first type error we are uh, able to accept. Usually we are using once again 0.05. It means five percentages value. So let's go into correlation task. So I would go once again into my data and first in place setting, uh, we would uh, use the same variables as previously. So we were discussing in analysis of Ryan's whether there is some difference between average level of length of education for people with different political orientation. So this was the question for the difference. We can also define similar tasks, not by differences, but by relationships. So my question can be, is the length of education and political scale somehow related? For example, is there are some relationship such as people on the right are more educated, people on the left are less educated. So we can perform such procedure by correlation also, but the question is slightly different. Zero hypothesis would be these two variables are not related at all. And alternative hypothesis would say there is some relationship. According to our previous results from analysis of Ryan's, we expect there is some relationship, maybe not very strong. Before we start, we need to discuss about uh, uh, the properties for these variables. So B9 and B6, B9 is cardinal variable. It is length of education, but B6 is ordinal variable. And once again, if one variable is ordinal, we should perform Spearman's or Kendall's uh, correlation coefficient, not Pearson's correlation. So we would go into computation, so let's go into analyze, correlate, divariate, and here we would take two variables. So length of education and political orientation. We would only need to change Pearson into Kendall or Spearman. Usually our people are using Spearman coefficient and the reason is it is always bigger or at least the same as Kendall's and people usually like to have bigger correlations. So that's why Spearman is preferred. But from statistical point of view, Kendall's style is maybe slightly better. 
So that's the definition uh, of uh, the coefficient. Uh, and if we would like to evaluate our results, so we can compute uh, results uh, in this table, which is called correlations. So if we take the crossing of years of education and political orientation, we can see that the value of the correlation is 0 0.165. And once again, it would be nice uh, to have uh, some benchmarks, some recommendations about correlations. Once again, we can use Cohen's uh, book, uh, which is uh, uh, very good and uh, uh, quite recommended in current literature. And uh, Cohen's recommendation uh, related uh, to correlations were 0 0.1 and close values called small uh, correlations, 0 0.3 and close uh, values called medium, and 0 0.5 and close values called big. So if you can see from substantive point of view, this correlation, it is quite small relationship. It's not a big surprise and we didn't expect it to find uh, some strong correlation, but there is something we can say from substantive point of view. P-value is the next row, uh, so we can see 0 0.000, and once again, somebody uh, can help me to interpret uh, this. Once again, null hypothesis says there is no relationship in the population. Alternative, there is some relationship. So if the p-value is low, somebody can help me to conclude. At least two of them um, are correlated. Okay, so at least somehow they are correlated and we know they are quite slightly correlated according to the value. So these are substantive and statistical significance of our results and this evaluation. Uh, you, know, all, uh, you know also one more let's call it trick uh, for correlations. Uh, and you know that for correlations, uh, we uh, can also compute confidence interval to know what is expected value of the correlation in population. Unfortunately, SPSS uh, do not offer procedure uh, for computation of uh, uh, confidence interval directly, but there is one indirect way, which is very simple and it is called bootstrapping. So I would only repeat this procedure. So if you like uh, to <coughs> find a confidence interval for correlation, you can go here into procedure for bootstrapping. You can ask for bootstrapping, uh, 200 of bootstrap uh, samples is enough. And so I will decrease 1000 to 200, continue and okay. So now uh, the computer is performing. Uh, uh, the bootstrapping and after some seconds uh, you can see that uh, expected level of correlation which is in my sample uh, 0.165 is between approximately 0.1 and 0.2 so it can be as low as 0.1 but it can be also as high as 0.2 still once again substantive significance this effect is quite small one. Uh, so that's my expectation about correlation. Uh, and uh, this is computation of uh, confidence interval. So it means one and usually recommended alternative to p-value. So we can evaluate p-value or we can evaluate confidence interval or we can also take into account both of these. So that's correlation. And last one step, uh, in this recap lecture is uh, that we will briefly recap uh, contingency table uh, logic. So once again, if we have two nominal variables or one nominal and one ordinal variable, and we are combining these into one table to find relationship. So we can use contingency table, contingency coefficients uh, and uh, chi-square test. So, Basic description in contingency table uh, is based usually on some descriptive statistics and we are usually performing percentages, usually row or column percentages. Then we are performing chi-square test for evaluating of statistical significance. And then we are usually computing contingency coefficients, uh, mostly Kramer's V for evaluating of substantive significance. So that's basic uh, steps. And uh, before we start, uh, we should uh, somehow define our analytical task. Uh, so uh, my recommendation uh, would be uh, for simplicity, 
to take, uh, for example, variable for gender, B48, so we will differentiate for men and women, and uh, to take, uh, for example, uh, the scale uh, of uh, voting, so it means whether people uh, were present uh, or not present uh, in the last uh, voting, it was 1998 before uh, data collection. So my question would be whether there is some relationship between gender and voting behavior, it means whether men or women uh, vote more often. Before we start to compute results, once again, it would be nice uh, to have some expectation uh, from you. So it means do you expect that Czech men or women vote more often or uh, the proportion would be uh, the same? Uh, the same. So expectation is that the proportion would be nearly the same. Okay, before we start, uh, we should only check this variable B1. Uh, and uh, if I check this variable, uh, so uh, there are three options. Yes, no, and didn't have right to vote. As I expect uh, that these people uh, will be uh, for a small amount, uh, so I would exclude this uh, code three from my data analysis. So I would uh, uh, define three as missing. So discrete missing value P1. So now uh, our data are prepared. So gender and uh, voting behavior P48 and B1. So let's go into analyze. Uh, compare means, uh, excuse me, descriptive statistics and cross steps. And here we need to define row variable and column variable. So for simplicity, I would take general as row variable and uh, last row participation as column variable. If I would like, first of all, to see descriptive results, maybe the best way how we can compare men and women would be to ask for row percentages. So I would go into cells and instead of observed counts, I would ask for percentages. To have all results in one step, I would also ask in statistics for chi-square test and for contingency coefficients. So I would click into continue and OK. And let's see uh, our results. So first of all, I can see that for male, there were 72 percentages of those who participated and the rest, it means 28, didn't participate. For female, the proportion is slightly lower for participants, 69, and for non-participants, slightly higher, 31. So at least in my sample, I can see some difference. The question is whether there is also some difference in the population. It means for all Czech people that are adult and can uh, go uh, vote. So this question is solved through chi-square test of independence. And uh, there are more than one of these tests. Uh, so usually we are performing so-called Pearson's chi-square test of independence, which is the older one and most common test. So this test, uh, can be found in the next table called simply chi-square test. And this is the first row, Pearson chi-square. And p-value here is 0 0.1. And once again, somebody can help me. I would once again rephrase uh, competing hypothesis. Null hypothesis say there is no relationship. It means participation for men and women is the same. Alternative hypothesis says there is some uh, difference for uh, the level of uh, voting participation. So it means participation of men and women is not the same. So what should be our conclusion here? Uh, there is no difference. We cannot reject that there is a difference. Once again, I would mm -hmm. like to repeat that we have two different statements. Stronger one, if p-value is low, we can reject null hypothesis and accept alternative one. Weaker one, if the p-value is big, so we cannot reject null hypothesis. So we cannot reject the hypothesis that the participation is the same uh, for men and women. So that's conclusion from test. So from statistical significance, this result would be called usually insignificant. We cannot generalize difference for the population. And 
if you try to compute uh, uh, contingency coefficients, so uh, I decide uh, I chosen a bad one, so I would go once again into statistics and call for phi and Kramer's v. So once again, uh, new one result. So here it is. Uh, so here we have uh, Kramer's v, and the value of these uh, coefficients is from zero to one. Zero means no relationship at all. One means maximum relationship. There are also some recommendation in Cohen's textbook, uh, but uh, they are quite controversial. Uh, so we will not discuss about these. But you can see very simple that 0 0.035 or 0 0.04, if you slightly round up, is very small one, very close to zero. So it says not only from statistical point of view, but also from substantive point of view, this relationship is nothing. So it means, it seems there is no difference between proportion of men and women participating in the last election. So that's my conclusion. So that's all uh, uh, for today's lecture. Uh, of course, uh, if you have any questions uh, related to the course, uh, feel free to ask me, uh, but uh, I hope that we have covered uh, all necessary analytical parts uh, uh, that can be also included in final test. But once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, I have a question, but related not uh, like uh, to this course, but your another course, advanced statistics. Okay, so I will stop recording.